everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. I'm hopping on today to answer a frequently asked question. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and thank you so much to everyone who is supporting me in so many positive ways. I really do appreciate the love, the warmth, the support that you guys show me every day. Today I'm going to answer one of those questions that comes up a lot and that question is about directional prints and how to handle them. And by directional prints, I mean a pattern that has the print going in the same direction. So if you were attempting to make a bag, one side of that bag is going to be upside down. And so today we're going to talk about it very quickly, how to avoid the upside down look. So y'all know what time it is. It's time to get started. So in this video, we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about how to get our prints going in the same direction if we're working with two sheets and how to get the overlapping print going in the same direction if you're working with one sheet. So let's start with two sheets. So if I had two pieces of 12 by 12 and I wanted to join those together to make a bag or a box, this is not how we would put them down. So if you join the two together here at the bottom, like this with all of the bunnies going in the same direction, then a portion of your bag is going to be upside down. The way that we fix that is we take one piece and we make sure that the prints are going in the opposite direction. And then we join the two pieces at the bottom. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and score this and we're going to make a very quick bag. So I am going to give myself a one inch hangover at the top. On the sides I'm going to score at three. And on the bottom I'm going to score at three. So on this piece I have my one inch score right here. So I know that my bunnies need to be going in the opposite direction. So I'll take my piece I'm going to score it at one, three, three, and three. And now I'm just going to fold and burnish my scores. Because we are going to make a very quick bag. So ordinarily what I would do when I'm making this bag is I would remove my two end pieces, but this time we're just going to place it all down at the same time so that you can see exactly what I'm doing in one pass. So I am going to use my glue so that I will have the wiggle room I need to work. And I'm just laying down some glue. Now I'll take this piece that has the three inch fold at the bottom and we have the one inch fold at the top. Same thing here, the one inch fold is here at the top, the three inch fold is here at the bottom. And you're able to see before I place it down that the bunnies are going in this direction, the bunnies are going in this direction. So now I'm just going to match it. Use my big old spatula to get that nice and stuck. Now I'm going to use my finger blade to go inside, go up to the score mark, and trim this way. And then I'll do that usual angle in here. Angle here, and reduce this piece. Same thing over here. So then here at the top where we have our one inch marks, we're just going to angle on those scores. I'm going to take my glue and I'm folding this backwards for contrast. We'll do the same thing over here. So I'll go up to that score mark and drag down, same thing here. So I'll angle in to reduce these pieces, fold this over, and let's get that stuck. And so now we're going to take our bag 
And so now on one side only, I'm going to remove that piece. And this piece. So the bag will have this on one end and it'll look like this on the other. And then on the same end, I am going to go ahead and reduce this to about one inch, these side panels, because we don't need all of that bulk to put this together. So now we can put it together. I'm going to take my glue, place my glue on my side panel. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to fold that in. I'll go inside with my baby spatula. We'll get it stuck. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. So I'm just going to take my glue, put my glue on this piece. And now I can match it. And when I'm matching it, I'm matching it to make sure that my top is even. If we have some overhang at the bottom, we can fix that, but we want the top to be nice and even. I'll go in with my baby spatula to make sure that I have a nice stick on this. And on the sides, I'm going to take these two pieces and just fold them in. And I'm folding them in because I just like having the contrast on the front and not necessarily on the side. So when you look at this bag, if I look at it on this side and I look at it on this side, my bunnies are going in the same direction. If we had joined both pieces with the bunnies going in the same direction, one side of this bag would have been upside down. So if you're joining two pieces together, make sure that at the bottom, you have them going in the opposite direction. So if the bunny head is going this way on one, it should be going in the opposite direction. So now I'm going to fold this. And I'm going to save my little bag because it is a usable Easter bag. All right, so let's say you're using a piece of directional paper and you want to make an envelope. Now this really is going to come down to personal preference. I am going to make an envelope for a five and a half by four and a quarter inch card. And so I've cut my paper to seven and three quarters by 12. So to make an envelope, I'm not going to be joining two pieces. If it's directional, I am going to accept the fact that on one portion of this envelope, it is going to be upside down. And that's okay for me, but if it's not okay for you and it's going to cause you any angst or you don't like the way it looks, make sure that you're using a pattern that's not directional when you're making envelopes. But when you are making an envelope and you're making a directional pattern, for me, I like the flaps of my envelope, the fold over, to be going in the same direction, which means that what would be the front of the envelope where we will put the label and everything, is going to be upside down. I am okay with that because when I do mail directional print envelopes, I'm using a fairly large label anyway, so you don't really see that it might be upside down and it's not as obvious as bunnies and Easter eggs. So I'm going to demo the technique for how to get your envelope to look the way that you would want it to look if you're using one piece of directional paper. If you want your flaps to be going in the right direction and you're okay with the front of it being upside down the way that I am, you're going to make sure that the direction of your print is upside down when you have it against the edge of your scoreboard, whether it's this edge or this edge. So when I turn it like this, you're able to see that all the way across my eggs and the bunnies are upside down. So this is how I'm going to score this. So I am going to score on the 12 inch side at four and a quarter and at eight and five eighths. And then I'll rotate it to the seven and three quarter inch side and we're going to score at one, rotate it to the opposite seven and three quarter and score at one. I'll take my big old spatula and we're going to fold and burnish those score marks. Then I'll take my finger blade and everywhere that I have a score, I am just going to angle and, and angle in 
like that. So we'll angle here and angle in all the way down. Same here. We're going to angle and angle all the way down. Angle and angle all the way down. And so now you'll be able to see exactly what I was talking about. When you fold in, fold up, you can see that the eggs are in the right direction. The top matches the eggs, they're in the right direction. When you flip it over, the front is upside down. For me, that's no biggie. For you, that might be a biggie. So we're going to go ahead and put this together. I'm going to add glue here, glue here, and glue here because this is a usable envelope. So I might as well put it together. So there's one envelope. And so now we're going to make that second envelope and we're going to do it so that the front of the envelope has everything going in the right direction. So remember, I have my bunnies placed in where if I turned it this way, then you can see that everything is going in the correct direction. So here's what's going to happen. I'll score it four and three quarters and eight and five eighths. Then I'll turn it to the seven and three quarter inch side. We're going to score at one. Rotate it to the opposite seven and three quarter inch side and score at one. And now I'll just fold and burnish all of my scores. I'll use my finger blade to go in and do the same thing I did on the first envelope. So I'm angling in, angling at the bottom to remove that piece. Angle here on the middle. angle angle here angle here go ahead and angle here and here so now we have our envelope when we fold this in and fold that up you'll notice that the Easter eggs are upside down on the back side here they're going in this direction, which for me is how I like for my envelopes to look. I like for the back when you open it to actually look like this. So I'll fold over and the flap will also be upside down. But when we take it and flip it over, if you prefer the front of your envelope to look like this, then method number two is how you would score your directional prints on your envelopes. But if you want your envelope to look like this, the method number one is the method that you would use for deciding how to orient your paper on the scoreboard to get that look. I have two usable envelopes. We're going to go ahead and just put these together. Bring that up. And so there we have it, y'all. Two very quick demos to show you how to orient that paper to get the look that you need when you're using directional prints. Practice following the processes that I've just shown you and that'll help you to understand going forward which way you need to orient your paper on the scoreboard to get your prints going in the proper direction. Y'all know I'm an upside down girl when it comes to placing down my chipboard sometimes, but I usually start out with all of my papers going in the right direction if I'm making a bag or a box using directional prints. So guys, I hope that this has helped some of you. If it has, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.